Okay, hello, grade nine. Um, today we're gonna start with the second unit, which is about the production and the genetics. Um, as we uh, saw last time, um, during the cloning experiment, we concluded together that uh, the nucleus is responsible for carrying the genetic information. And what is exactly inside the nucleus responsible for carrying the genetic information? It is the chromosome, as you see. The chromosome is made up of two chromatids joined together by a centromere, carrying what? Carrying the DNA, which is also known as the genes. Now, talking about the human life cycle, um, as you took before in the lower grades, is I get results from the fertilization of two sex cells, which are the sperm cell and the ovum cell. Then this zygote undergoes multiplication in order to grow up and form an embryo, which will then uh, change into a fetus, which will develop into a baby, then a child, and an adult. This is what, this is the life cycle of a human being. So, the female and the male, they both reproduce by meiosis, and we're going to talk later about meiosis. The female produces the egg cell, also known as an ovum, whereas the male produces the sex cell, which is the sperm. They fertilize together or during fertilization to form a zygote, which will under then go mito mitosis to form a, a baby. And then the cells of this baby will undergo mitosis again in order to grow up and change into an adult. And then the cycle continues. For that reason, it, it is called a life cycle. Now, talking about the typical animal cell, because we already know that we have two types of cells. We have the plant cell and the animal cell. Now, the animal cell is the cell not only presented in animals, it's the cell that is, it is presented in humans as well. Now, what are the organelles, the cell organelles, yani? what is the cell made up of? Most importantly, the human cells are made up of a nucleus, okay? Inside this nucleus, we have a nucleolus. Come on, we're talking about normal cells. If we're talking about the red blood cell, I mean, all cells in the body are nucleated except the red blood cells we talked about before during respiration. What else do we have? What are other organelles presented in the cell? We have the cell membrane, okay, as you see, it's a, as if a protective cover, it uh, um, controls what enters inside and outside the cell. We have the mitochondria, which provides the cell with the energy, we have the Golgi apparatus, we have nuclear membrane, which covers the nucleus, you have the endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, um, vesicles, and other structures. <clears throat> now that was an introduction talking about the first lesson in this chapter we're gonna talk about what is karyotype okay in order to see what karyotype is we're gonna see this um, animation. blood is collected from the person being analyzed the blood is added to a growth medium that also contains a chemical that stimulates mitosis the cells are allowed to grow in this medium for two or three days at body temperature colchicine is added to arrest cell division at metaphase the arrested cells are transferred to a centrifuge tube. Centrifugation concentrates the cells at the bottom of the tube. Addition of a hypotonic salt solution causes them to swell up and burst. The lysed cells are prepared, fixed, and placed on a microscope slide. A cell is observed and photographed under the microscope. The part of the photo that shows the cell's chromosomes is enlarged, and images of individual chromosomes are cut out. Finally, the images are arranged so that all pairs of homologous chromosomes are horizontally aligned by centromeres. The result is a karyotype diagram of the arrested metaphase chromosomes. This is the karyotype of a normal male. Click the buttons to compare the karyotypes of individual... So... What is a karyotype from the small animation that we saw? A karyotype is an array of chromosomes, or you can say arrangement of chromosomes, arranged in a decreasing order, as you saw, from the largest or the tallest to the smallest, um, according to the shape, the size, and the location of the centromere that we said is the point of intersection or of the two chromatids. So what did they do? They collected um, blood from a human. And as you see in the animation, they followed several steps in order to finally result and have a karyotype, a normal karyotype of a human being. Now, talking about the chromosomes and the arrangement of chromosomes in the karyotype, 
usually uh, this reminds me of when your mother is they ask you to collect the pair of socks that you have like uh, when the laundry is over and you have several uh, uh, socks uh, your mom usually asks you to to put the pairs together or to pair them up so what do you do you start um, searching for uh, not the chromosomes here we're talking about socks uh, the ones that look alike you know the same color the same shape and th that's how you arrange them together so it's similar to the idea of what of uh, arranging these chromosomes we look at them same size same position of centromere same shape and finally we arrange them from the largest in decreasing order we say in decreasing means from the largest to the smallest so what did they do how did they do a human karyotype uh, step number one as we said they took um, a blood is collected from a person being analyzed then the blood is added to a growth medium that also contains a chemical that stimulates mitosis in order for the cells inside the blood to undergo mitosis then they add a chemical which is called chitin it is added to arrest the cell division at metaphase and then they do centrifugation uh, which allows the concentration of the cells at the bottom of the tube after this they add a hypotonic salt solution which causes them to swell up and burst and when these cells burst the chromosomes get out of them then the light cells are prepared they're fixed and placed on a microscopic slide they put them on a slide um, after the, this they observe a cell under the microscope which looks like this and they take a photo for it it's photographed under the microscope it's photographed in order and, and then the chromosomes are cut and then they're arranged as you see and as we said from the largest chromosome to the smallest chromosome uh, they look alike the homologous chromosome same shape same size same position of centromere as you see now the chromosomes themselves this is a human karyotype we have two types of chromosomes in a human karyotype we have the autosomes and we have the gonosomes now the autosomes are chromosomes from number one to number 22 whereas the gonosomes are also known as the sex chromosome this allows us to know whether this karyotype belongs to a male or a female now if we look at this karyotype here it represents the karyotype of a human male why a male because when we look at the sex chromosome which is pair number 23 the last one we notice that it is made up of one long chromosome and one short chromosome representing the x and y and when we see X and Y, this means that this karyotype belongs to a male chromosome karyotype. Whereas talking about a human female, when we look at the last chromosome, last pair of chromosome, which is the sex chromosome, also known as a gonosome, we said, it is made up of two homologous chromosomes. They're identical to each other, same size, same shape, same length. This means that they're both x chromosomes and the xx chromosome in the sex cell represent a human female so if we're comparing now the difference between uh, a karyotype of a male and a karyotype of a female we can notice that both contains autosomes from number one to number 22 uh, arranged in decreasing order whereas the difference is where is in the sex chromosome or the gonosome where we have in a male in the male we have none homologous chromosomes whereas in the female we have homologous chromosomes identical to each other so what's the difference in these two karyotypes how many autosomes and gonosomes does each have we look at the autosomes we have 22 pairs of autosomes in a male and in a female as well whereas the gonosomes in a male we have non homologous chromosomes made up of X and Y and in a female we have two homologous chromosomes made up of XX are these karyotypes belonging to a haploid or diploid cells when we say diploid cells we mean that each chromosome is made up of two copies a pair that is made up of two copies one that is maternal and one that is paternal and when we say maternal it means it, it came from the mom 
when we say paternal, it came from the, from the dad. Now, why do we do karyotype? The question is, why do we need to, to do karyotype? We can, and from a karyotype, we look at it. We can know whether this karyotype belongs to a male or a female. But not only to identify the gender or the sex of a human, we use karyotype. No, it's to detect abnormalities. Is there an abnormality in the karyotype? Um, there might be an extra copy of a chromosome, there might be an, a missing chromosome, or a part of a chromosome that is not presented. Let's see. So the abnormalities in a karyotype, they could be a number, they could be a structure. When we say number, it means the due to non-destruction of homologous chromosomes or sister chromatids during the anaphase 1 or anaphase 2. We might have problems in the autosomes and we might have problems in the gonosomes. In autosomes, we have the free trisomy 21. We have the translocated trisomy 21. In gonosomes, you have the Turner, Turner syndrome and the Klinefelter syndrome. And sometimes in structure, like when a fragment of a cr uh, chromosome um, is attached to another part or another chromosome, like the credo shaw. Um, let us see now, how do we observe, again to the animation, that there is a problem in the karyotype? How do we notice that there is an extra copy or a missing copy? And how do we know the disease itself? Blood is collected from the person being analyzed. The blood is added to a growth medium that also contains a chemical that stimulates mitosis. The cells are allowed to grow in this medium for two or three days at body temperature. Colchicine is added to arrest cell division at metaphase. The arrested cells are transferred to a centrifuge tube. Centrifugation concentrates the cells at the bottom of the tube. Addition of a hypotonic salt solution causes them to swell up and burst. So these are again the steps of how they did a karyotype. We're gonna remember them again, and then we're gonna see um, what are the problems or the chromosomal abnormalities that might appear in a karyotype. The lysed cells are prepared, fixed, and placed on a microscope slide. A cell is observed and photographed under the microscope. The part of the photo that shows the cell's chromosomes is enlarged, and images of individual chromosomes are cut out. Finally, the images are arranged so that all pairs of homologous chromosomes are horizontally aligned by centromeres. The result is a karyotype diagram of the arrested metaphase chromosomes. This is the karyotype of a normal male. Click the buttons to compare the karyotypes of individuals with chromosomal abnormalities. So as you see, as we said before, this is a karyotype of a normal male. Why a male? Because look at the sex chromosome. We have, they're non-homologous. One is long and one is short. So let us see now the karyotype of a Turner syndrome female. If we look at the karyotype of a um, Turner syndrome female, why is why she is a female because we only have one copy of the X chromosome uh, but we have another copy that is missing for, and this syndrome is called the Turner syndrome and it usually affects females. Now the Down syndrome also known as trisomy 21. Why trisomy 21? Because as we see here uh, chromosome pair number 21 is made up of three copies instead of two. The Kleinfelter syndrome male from the name, so it affects males, instead of having a normal X and Y, one that is long and one, is, one that is short, we have two copies of the uh, X chromosome and one copy of the Y chromosome, so as if we have an extra X chromosome added, which makes it abnormal, of course. 